Hi, welcome to Programming in Bullets Basic. In this session we're going to be covering how to do simple gravity. Uh, this will be used in many 2D games, mainly platform games, um, but obviously you, you may design whatever game you want uh, and come up with a need for this. Uh, so this is just how to make any object just accelerate towards the ground until it hits it, just using one simple variable for gravity. So we've got a, we've got a sprite here which we're going to make drop to the ground. That's just a ball, I'll zoom that in. There. And I'll walk you through the code before we run the code. So we set up a graphics function here. These tutorials do assume that you've got a basic grasp of Blitz Basic. Uh, you can learn that by going through my other tutorials of programming Blitz Basic for beginners, which covers everything you need to cover a very simple Space Invaders type game. So we set up a graphics command. We load that image in I just showed you. We handle the image from the middle. Now because I'm going to get the ball to hit the ground, uh, I need the radius of the ball because I need to know where the middle of the ball is compared to the ground. So I take the radius and that's using a command called image height, which will just give you the height of an image and then I divide it by two to get the ball's radius. So simple as that really. And that would obviously work for any image. Now I set where the x coordinate is for the ball on the screen. I set what the y coordinate is for the ball on the screen. I've used a hash here, which makes this a floating point variable, so I can uh, uh, have like 0 0.1, 0 0.2, or anything more precise than that if I wish. Uh, that's important for gravity because gravity is typically in a game defined as being less than zero. Uh, if I set add, if I had gravity as one, an object would just fly into the ground very very quickly. Um, Whereas normal normal gravity is measured as uh, 9.6 meters a second in real life, which means that if you're writing a game and you've got the game running at say 20 or 30 frames a second, you need to divide 9.6 by however many frames per second to get the acceleration per frame. So 0.4 frames a second, it, which means roughly 25 times that, means we'll get about nine meters per second. I'm actually going to run this at 30 frames per second, so my gravity isn't far off here what it really is. You can tweak around with your gravity variable quite a lot uh, to find what looks good in the game really. Uh, I've set my, which is how much the ball is moving by in the y-axis. I don't just add gravity onto the y variable every time for ball y, because if I was to do that the ball wouldn't accelerate, it would just move at a constant rate downwards. So for acceleration with objects you need to have a a M Y or M X if you're moving on the X. Uh, I've commented M X at the moment because I just want it to drop straight down. Ground is 450. That's just the height of the ground. So when a ball gets down to 450, we'll make it stop or bounce or whatever. And we have our gravity variable. We have our timer here set to 30 frames a second. Uh, the dual purpose here is one to make it run a bit run smoother, and also two it takes up less processor time if you use a timer because the computer is not running flat out. So it means I can show you this running without my voice um, cutting out and going out of sync with the video as the screen capture software cannot keep up. We set it to draw to the back buffer we're going to be animating so we want to use double buffering. And we start our main while loop so while we don't press escape, clear the screen. MY which is how much it moves on the Y axis is MY plus gravity. So every frame MY will increase by how much gravity is which means for every frame the ball will then Incre will increase in speed by a, by a constant amount because so you add gravity to my and then add my to the ball y so the ball will move downwards as y goes from naught at the top of the screen to 640 at the bottom uh, 4, 480 sorry at the bottom of the screen then we have the ball hits the ground which is when the middle of the ball which is what we're calling ball y goes higher than ground minus the radius of the ball otherwise it will get halfway through the floor before actually bouncing. Then what we're going to do is we're going to set ball y to be the ground so it doesn't look like it goes through the ground at all minus the radius. We're also going to reverse my so that it moves upwards instead so it bounces and also because we don't want it to bounce as high we want it to bounce a bit lower so it looks more realistic we times my by minus by 0.8 which means that if it's say it's going 10 pixels a second when it hits the floor, and 10 pixels per frame. When it bounces up it will be going at 8 pixels instead and then 
you know, six and a bit, and then five and a bit, and so on. So you'll see the ball bounce lower and lower, just like a bouncy ball in real life. Um, also, I've got a command on here to slow it down on MX, so it moves across the screen less. That will come into play later on when um, we actually use MX. At the moment, it will just drop straight down. Then we draw the ball to the screen, wait for the timer, flip the buffer to the front, and end the loop. Oh, and end the program. So if I show that running, you see the ball just drops to the ground, bounces, bounces lower each time, until it'll get to the point where you won't be able to tell any bounces, and it'll just stop. Press escape, and that's it. So to make it look, make it a bit more fun, I bring MX in so it bounces across the screen. Remember, MX will go lower every time it hits the floor, so it will slowly grind to a halt as it goes across. So I run this. It's not moving. Let's find out why. That's why. I haven't updated the ball X with MX, so I uncomment that. Run it. And the ball will bounce across the screen. Until it stops. And that's how you can do basic gravity in Blitz Basic. I have written another program which is an update on this which you can download which uses types to have more than one ball so it's just a matter of in introducing a ball type that has the same variables for each ball as this has here and then lo looping through the types when you update them and draw them so if I load that one and run this I've also randomized where the balls start as well I think I've got the timer have it's just a little high, so I'm going to bring that down, increase the gravity, that should be fine. So, if I run that, so here we can have lots of balls bouncing around at once. And that's covering simple gravity in games. Uh, if you need any more information on this, just leave me a comment or send me an email and you can download the zip file from the comments on the right hand side of the video as well as any other um, zip files with any source code of any other uh, tutorials that I've put online. Okay, have fun and I'll see you next time.